And this is my week six assignment for FTT 122, Intro to Ammo and Ballistics. This week I'm gonna be using some everyday objects to try to explain and demonstrate some terminology for this week's assignment. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so for our first term, we're gonna be talking about trajectory. And for this term, I've got this flashlight and this cap that I found somewhere, okay? So this flashlight is gonna act as the barrel and this obviously is gonna be the projectile. So when a projectile leaves the barrel after being fired, it's gonna follow a path and that path is going to be what's called the trajectory. Now this trajectory is initially, or supposedly, supposed if all things go well, supposed to be a straight one. But eventually, due to other factors such as gravity and like you know loss of uh, velocity, it's going to start curving. This path that this object takes is what's called the trajectory. So for sights, we'll just go ahead and use the flashlight again. All right. So as you're looking down this uh, this imaginary slide, because we'll just use a uh, slide of a pistol just for simplicity's sake, there will generally be a rear sight and a front sight, and you'll want to go ahead and align those to go ahead and make sure that the orientation of the barrel and the projectile being fired is aligned with what you're wanting to, in theory, if all things go correctly, the round should hit where you're aiming. So for gyroscopic drift, we're going to go ahead and spin this lens cover, right? And as you can see, over time, that lens cover will drift away from the initial spot, right? And as you can see here, if you see that there's an imaginary line running through the middle of this, you know, this lens cover, that is going to be the axis, right? That of which this object will spin. Now, over time, as the object continues to spin, it's going to move away from where it was. And this occurs because of the conservation of um, angular momentum and it affects the orientation of the object off its initial axis. So our next term is drag and drag is the force that opposes the motion of an object. So for that demonstration, we'll just go ahead and use a piece of paper. I'll go ahead and crumble it up, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and drop it, right? And so as you can see, the force that is displaced as the object falls, that is what's called drag, right? It causes the object to fall slower, that's drag. Okay, so for our next one, we're gonna be talking about the Magnus effect. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to use this uh, crumpled up piece of paper, and we're, I'm gonna simulate wind blowing over it, okay? And so as this object is moving and wind's blowing over it, there's going to be air pressures around this object, and so it's gonna kinda like bounce around because of the different pressures surrounding us. And so that effect is actually what's called the Magnus effect. Okay, so our next term is gonna be the Coriolis effect. And for anybody who's watched any type of like, you know, sniper movie out there, um, it's really correlating with the curvature of the earth and the time and distance that a bullet travels. And so we'll just imagine this as the earth and it's spinning on its axis, right? And so when you fire a bullet, the spinning of the earth you have to take into account because as that bullet is traveling the earth is still spinning your initial point of aim is going to be significantly different because the earth is spinning that's the best way i know how to explain coriolis effect and um yeah it's really hard to demonstrate with an everyday object all right and so for our next term the eotavos etavos etavos Edivos effect. Anybody who's really into science um, knows that the Earth is not an actual perfect sphere. If we took away all the water from the Earth, right, it's actually pretty much just a huge clump of rock pushed together, right? And so with varying distances, right? So this is a great example because if you look here, right, you can see that there's a little bit of divot, right? And so just imagine this like being like the Marianas Trench and, you know, this part right here being Mount Everest, right? So there's going to be a difference in gravitational pull here versus here. And so an object is going to weigh differently here versus here. And so, and so that is the Eotavos effect. Okay, and so for our next term, we're gonna be talking about vertical angles. Now this one's a little bit harder for me to explain, but um, gravity only works perpendicular, right? So when you're shooting, a lot of times for newer shooters, you're going to be missing a lot. And that is because gravity is only affecting the trajectory of that bullet for a fraction of the 
the time it travels, right? The greater force is gonna to be towards the end of the trajectory flight versus at the beginning. Okay, so, and so for our last term, we're gonna be talking about transonic ballistic performance, okay? And so I have this pen, this is like the most aerodynamic pen that I own. And so basically what happens is, as a projectile is moving at supersonic speeds, the effects of drag and other forces upon a projectile are less uh, prevalent. So the projectile's shape and speed and velocity is able to defeat a lot of that. Now, as the velocity starts to drop and it drops from supersonic to subsonic, there'll be more forces acting upon this projectile because it can no longer have the, the velocity or the speed to defeat um, those other forces. So it'll start to, um, to it'll start, uh, so it'll start to wobble a bit. It'll be more susceptible to wind buffeting um, and it'll start to wobble, okay? And of course, this is going to affect accuracy and performance, but a really well designed or optimized projectile can, won't completely defeat these, but can handle those forces a lot better. And so, projectile design and, um, so projectile design is really important when it comes to uh, transonic ballistic performance. So I hope that explained as best as I can using everyday objects, all of these terms, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you.